David Taylor Chester. Hi, my name is Micah Nicholson. Hello, I'm Daniel Aguilar. Hey guys, my name is India. Hey, I'm Jeremy. And, and today, today, we're, we're talking, talking about Big Swar, my, my mother's mother. Most of it's based in Africa. Just to highlight some of the awards she received throughout her lifestyle is the Women Hahn Fellowship of Creative Arts, Latin American and Human Rights. Many were her first novel at age 11. Her famous novels all include The Impact of Slave Trade, such as Sequel 1984, and the Sequel Sequel to 1985, The Children of School. Her letter fiction of the tour, My Mother's Mother, was published in 2006, originally written in French, but it was later translated by Richard Wilcox. Black Twist, that's her current husband. Her main name came from her first marriage, Mama Pingu, and that's where she originally got her last name from. And the story, Big Tour, My Mother's Mother, Maria Scardo has pieced together the life of a maternal grandmother to create the moving and profound novel. The author's personal journey of discovery reveals that Ruth. That Victoire, her white skinned grandmother, who worked as a cook for the Longbird family, which is also a pre -open. Her novels are written in French, but also have been translated into English, German, Dutch, Italian, Spanish, and Japanese, so she's very well known. She also writes plays, children's books, and essays on literature and politics. Reese is still alive, and her latest novel was written in 2016, was also published, and it's called What is Africa to Me? Hi, my name is Taylor Chester, and I will be talking to you guys about the first part of the summary of Victoire. It starts with Victoire, of course. She's born in Marika, Lone. Um, when she was born, she was born an orphan because her mother died when she was giving birth. She was then taken into the hands of her grandmother, Caldonia. Caldonia then introduced her to being a servant at a very young age. She then started working for the Jovio family. And there she met, the Jovio family was also Caldonia's cousin. So that's how they um, started. And they're also a black family. When Victoire was working for them, she got pregnant with Jean, with Jean. And she got pregnant by her grandmother's fiance. And still, since this was still in Marie Gallant, Victoire knew how the, the island was and it wasn't a great place to raise a child. So then she moved to Guadalupe and there she started working for the Wahlbergs family, Boniface and Anne Marie. Through the story, um, we are introduced to the Wahlbergs, like Taylor said. And Years pass by, nothing really significant happens. And Jean later becomes, and she grows up to be a teacher. Through those years, Jean always gonna be mad at her mother and has a hate for her Walbergs. Not really a hate, but a dislike. And eventually that leads to her moving out of the Walbergs household. She decides to take Victoire with her. And Victoire was not really pleased by, us, by the idea of leaving the Walbergs, but more of the slow, she just complied because Jean said so. And when I could just magically run out of the house and take all their belongings, even though it's raining, it is different. After that, Jean and Victoire live alone for a while. And during those days, it was really quiet between them, as Jean really didn't have a relationship with her mother. And Victoire was bored in the house. She really didn't have nothing to do since the house already had its servants and they cleaned and did stuff around and Victoire's more right there so to just tell them what to do. And she did whatever she did for the Walkers for Jean, but Jean didn't like that, to have that same type of mentality because her mother wasn't her servant. Um, later on, Jean meets a guy named Augustin, Auguste, and he is a grand neighbor to the South, Negre, Negres, and he is a principal of a school and it's an all boys school, I think. And he's really high status. He's pretty old, he's like four years old. And Jean was like, I think 20 when she met him. Probably even younger. Um, he has a lot of money. He comes from, I guess he built a lot of wealth, the money does. And he's very educated, but he talks a lot and Jean doesn't like that. And it's stated in the story that she doesn't like that. Um, 
she takes him to meet the Wahlbergs with Victoire, and Victoire kind of reunited with the Wahlbergs. She was kind of happy to see them. Uh, Jean was not so pleased by the meeting, and Auguste was, he made a really bad joke, I guess, towards the end of the meeting. Uh, a while later, they married, and when they married, it's like a great, it's a really grand wedding, and Victoire wants to cook for the wedding, but Jean doesn't let her. And I guess this makes Victor really, really sad because cooking is her passion. And I, that's the way she shows all her love towards the child. Like the only way she could express her love for Jean. So the wedding passes and Jean and Auguste have a child, which is gonna be Auguste Jr. And Victor, no, when she learned this, she was so happy to see that her daughter Jean was gonna have a baby. So she treats the pregnancy like it was her own. She takes care of Jean all the nights she is pregnant. She bathes Jean, she clothes Jean, she plays with her hair, does all that. Treats her like it was her baby again. And this will be the only time Victoire does that. For any other pregnancy, she's not really there. She's more so tired, but she's more so sad, so she doesn't even put effort into it. So this pregnancy was really highlighted in the story. And when Augusta Jr. was born, they made some cute jokes here and there that Jean really didn't like. But Jean treated her pregnancy as if it was any other day. She didn't take any sick, sick days. She did not leave her teaching or her schooling. She was really, she was a woman who was really empowered by herself. And her schooling and her education led her to become a grand degree herself. And she was really educated. She did what she had to do. She had her baby. After the baby was born, some time passed again. And Victoire and Jean didn't really connect like they did when she became pregnant with her first son. So after a while, Boniface dies. And when Victoire learns of his death, she becomes really, really sad. At they attend her funeral, Jean being not really present, she doesn't show any emotion. Victoire bawling her eyes out, she really cares about it. It's shown in her actions, how she feels even afterwards. She becomes really, really sad. Yes, she becomes even heartbroken the thought of him being dead. And and actually being dead. So she loses like all motivation in her life. She stops feeling really bad about it. She stops doing all the things she did, running to the store, weighing the meat, doing all that she used to do for Jean. She stops doing so. She loses all faith in her life and everything. And the story just slowly, slowly dies out. All the fire burns out because it just eventually becomes where Victoire becomes really old and sick. And Jean's just there caring for her mother. She's really sad to see her mother pass, but she does not want to express to her mother all this, all these years of watching her mother do things she didn't like, watching her mother not be educated, and her be educated, and her be really stubborn. She feels some kind of sad for her mother, her being her mother, but she doesn't know how to express it still, even until she dies. And the big part does not know how to do it herself either. So then Jean and Auguste start living together around the home and the story concludes with their first daughter being born and their first daughter being born is named Nina. And it was very anticlimactic because it was really built up to be a significant event, which I thought was gonna be the um, way the author is born. Because the way it's described is really like didn't state who it's gonna be and it was built up to be her, but instead it's one her older sister. That's where the story ends. And now I was going to go on to Taylor's just going to explain the character's relations. Thanks, Daniel, for wrapping up the summary. Now I'll be talking to you guys about the relationships and the conflicts between these relationships. The first relationship I will talk about is Victoire and Jean. Jean is her daughter. At first, they have a good relationship, they have a good bond. Jean um, tries to teach Victoire how to read because she's an illiterate servant. And so she tries to teach her mother how to read. And she also teaches her mother like different alphabets. They'll take turns saying each letter. And sometimes I would say it wrong. Then as the story progresses, Jean starts to get a disgusted and ashamed feeling towards her mother. So the relationship between them is kind of like a hatred relationship. All Victoire wanted to do was love her daughter, but her daughter showed so much hatred to her mother. And um, in the story, it talks about how uh, Victoire and Boniface had a relationship and that Jean didn't like that. So 
I think that because of the relationship that Victoria had with Boniface, that's why she hated her so much and also because she was embarrassed that she was illiterate. So the next relationship I'll talk about is Victoire and Anne Marie. Anne Marie is actually Boniface's wife and the master's wife. Their relationship is really tight. It's more like a best friend type of connection because they were around the same age. Sometimes Anne Marie would, I mean, Victoire would be in the kitchen trying to cook and Anne Marie would try to help her in the kitchen, but Victoire was more of like the kitchen was our dominant place. So she didn't like help in the kitchen. Anne Marie also tried to teach Victoire how to play the guitar because um, Anne Marie was like a um, instrumentalist. The next relationship I was talking about is Victoire and Boniface. As previously stated, um, Jean, as I previously stated, I'm stated, Jean and um, Jean did like uh, Victoire because of her relationship with Boniface. She just looked at it in disgust. So the relationship between these two were a sexual type of relationship. They um, they would make love every night. Victoire would also like sleep with him. It was more of a husband-wife relationship than he had with Anne Marie. And um, in the book, it says that Victoire actually liked Boniface. So it wasn't like she was doing this in disgust, like in like, I don't want to do this. But it was actually a mutual thing between the two. And she wasn't, it wasn't like she was being used. It was enjoyable for both parties. So um, Boniface also, it says in the book that he had some feelings towards her, but of course he's not going to say that because he is white and that's his servant and he's also married. Uh, so, I wanted to talk about the settings of the book and um, Maurice Kanye's book. It's a lot of really different little islands and different little spots you need to talk about briefly in the book, but it's just glanced over. So for my portion of the video, I'll be talking to you guys about French and Creole history and colonialism. So starting with the language in the book, there are aspects of the book where there's usage of French speaking and as well as Creole speaking. 
Now, they're almost the same, but they are slightly different. So Creole is almost a sub-language of the French. And the ones who would speak Creole throughout the book were ones who were less educated or illiterate, such as Victoire or Caledonia, her mother. And the ones who were speaking French tend to be of higher education, higher class, so that was the Wahlbergs or any other rich families um, that lived in Guadeloupe. Now, the main difference between these two languages are the grammar and the conjugation. Um, in Creole, it's a little more lax, so less um, structured, so it's all, a lot of the words aren't conjugated. Um, whereas in French, it's a little more sophisticated, one of the more prettier languages. So that's how you can tell the different status difference between the two of them. Now, the most important part of this is the French colonialism that takes place. Now, Guadeloupe was an exploitation colony, but the French, because the French brought African and Native American slaves to work in their fields, to work on their plantations, and to work inside their homes. Uh, Victoire is an example of a domestic servant, which means that she works in the home. She was a cook there, as we remember from the book. And because of this, she did the demands of what, especially the man of the house wanted, so Boniface in this case. And it also was very common for these women, the domestic servants, to be uh, mistresses or have a sexual relationship with the man of the house. So Victoire to have this relationship with Boniface is not uncommon. Um, in French colon colonialism, they recognized three kinds of people. They recognized white people, they recognized black, and people of mixed race. Um, Grand Blancs, Petit Blancs were white. Um, Grand Negre was black people and mixed people as well. Um, whites, of course, were rich, and, either rich and or freed. Um, and blacks were the ones who were always enslaved, so that's where we can see the racial slavery that takes place throughout the book. Um, and in regards to racial slavery, there was these laws such as the idea of permanent. So that's when the condition of the child is in regards to the child, to the condition of the mother. Um, this affects the relationship between Victoire and her daughter, Jeanne, as we know, because of the lifestyle that she lived, because people were always questioning who they were, how they identified, because the French saw Creole as disgusting, unattractive, unappealing. And this is why we see instances where Jeanne is being made fun of in school and where Victoire is being made fun of in Marie Gallant. Um, so because of the racial slavery, the colonialism, and the language that takes place in this book, we get to learn more about Victoire, her relationship with her daughter, and the life that she lived, and it just gives further context to the story. So thank you, and let's move on to the next person. Thank you, Jeremy. And for my portion of the project, I am here to talk about Creole dishes, and I have chose two Creole dishes to choose from. And the Creole dishes that I chose were jambalaya and seafood gumbo. So with jambalaya, jambalaya in New Orleans and surrounding regions, Creole cooks make a red jambalaya that starts with meat and a trinity of onion, celery, and bell pepper. Seafood and tomatoes are then added, following by an equal portion of rice and stock. Like most dishes of early American origin, jambalaya was born of necessity, a delicious and inexpensive means of using whatever ingredients were likely to be on hand at the time. Each cook and culture contributed their own unique variations. Tomato was likely the addition of Spanish cooks, a particular substitution for the orange set saffron they commonly included in the dish. And French, doubt, French doubtlessly contributed spices brought from the Caribbean. And they have very, there's a lot of ingredients in it. So many people make it differently, but some people actually like, Make it like red, some people make it different colors. It just depends on how you actually make it. It's Jeremy again. So I'm here to talk about gumbo for the next portion of my assignment. And gumbo is basically a soup, which is popular in the United States. Well, basically it's the most popular in Louisiana because we're most prominent for it. And is the official state cuisine. And gumbo consists primarily of strongly flavored stock meat or selfish and a thicker and what Louisiana is called Holy Trinity which is basically celery bell peppers and onions so gumbo is often categorized as the type of thickener used whether okra or fowl powder some people actually put okra in their gumbo some people don't put it in their gumbo so it doesn't really mean that they have to have it in the gumbo but I would prefer it in the gumbo that's, that's just my opinion and gumbo can be made, gumbo is basically like one of the 
best tasting cuisines that I can say that's from down here. One of the most popular because everybody that comes down here loves to actually try gumbo. And then it's, it's not, everybody's gumbo is not the same. So it's, you're getting a different variation from every type of person. And it's not like you're gonna get the same type of gumbo because you're gonna get something new every time. And it's just fun knowing that you can actually try something and at the same time know that you're getting different flavors from different people because not everybody makes their gumbo the same but it's all gonna be good at the end of the day. Avec à la fois la capacité de de, de ne jouer des ruses, de d'incorporer beaucoup d'ironie, mais il y a toujours cette uh, cette honnêteté qui est là. Cette honnêteté, comme vous l'appelez, n'a pas toujours été facile à préserver. J'ai toujours pensé que écrire, c'est quelque part dire la vérité, dire ce qu'on pense euh, sur les gens, sur les euh, problèmes politiques, sur les problèmes sociaux, sur les siens, sur les autres, sur soi-même aussi. Donc finalement, je pense et je l'ai découvert très tôt que dire la vérité ne plaît pas à tout le monde. Il y a un proverbe qui dit euh, « toute vérité n'est pas bonne à dire ». Donc, quand vous essayez de dire la vérité, euh, de, de, de dépeindre les choses euh, et les êtres comme vous les voyez, évidemment, vous êtes euh, amené à choquer, à déplaire. Donc, euh, depuis mon premier livre, R.M. Conan, j'ai eu des problèmes de, avec le public. Comment lire euh, un livre. Les gens très souvent le disaient au premier degré, ne voyaient pas ce que je voulais vraiment dire au fond. Et souvent, souvent, on me faisait le reproche d'être négative, alors qu'en fait, tout ce que je voulais faire, c'était attirer l'attention sur une situation et peut-être, avec un peu de réflexion commune, arriver. Oh, you wait for me to say go? Oh, I'll start your recording. Where's the note? Where's the note? Oh, that's what I'm doing. What am I supposed to be doing? I'm not thinking. What are you doing? Nothing. It's just started. So we're actually working on the project. Ha, 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 ha.